This is One on One. Wow. That was, in fact, the Montclair Orchestra. This is David Chan, the music director. You saw him conducting there. He's also a concert master at the Metropolitan Opera. Hold on one second. I need to clarify something. What we were just looking at, coming from St. Luke's in Montclair. That's correct. Around the corner from where I live. Absolutely. And I, <laughs> I thought I knew what was going on in town. That's extraordinary. Talk about that orchestra. Well. We're relatively new on the block, that's for sure. We're in our third season now, but I think already very exciting things are happening. And it was conceived originally as a way to serve the cultural community in Montclair, which as you know is so, so rich. Absolutely. But maybe not as deep in music as it is in art and film and some other areas. So this came about, and by the way, it turned also into a project to help train the next generation of musicians. How so? We're approximately half and half professional and student. So we have the best orchestral musicians in the world coming from Lincoln Center, New York Philharmonic, Metropolitan Opera, also Jerseyside, New Jersey Symphony, and other top orchestras in the area playing together with conservatory students from Juilliard, Manhattan School, Montclair State, of course, and uh, it's just turned into a fantastic collaboration. How are you getting these extraordinary musicians? How are you getting them to come to uh, St. Luke's in Montclair? Well, I think any time you're a musician, there's a part that you do for yourself, for your own artistic creativity, but a part also just to give something, give something to the community. And when you work with students or teach, you're giving to the next generation. So I think it's all these things put together, there's a desire to do things outside the normal box. Mm -hmm. And I, I really think the project has brought out the best on both sides. You have the younger colleagues inspiring their older ones, and then also the older ones with their experience, the, the students have to up their game a little bit. Dave, you're looking at the students here. Um, how are they selected? Because they have to be awfully talented. Well, we're lucky in this area with the proximity to New York City that we have access to some of the best students in the world, as well as the professionals. A lot of it is teacher recommendations, some of it is auditions, some of it are players that I know and encounter through summer festivals. So it's a variety of methods. You know, you're a violinist. Yes. My quote, my notes say, he's a brilliant violinist. <laughs> At what point? beyond being a brilliant violinist who obviously had to work many, many long, hard hours to get to be the musician you are. At what point did you know you wanted to play this role with an orchestra that you're playing now? That's a very good question. I, I didn't know that for a long time. I actually resisted the role of the baton. I always felt the like... The role of the baton? Well, to, yes, to be a conductor... Were you to asked be on to the... do it before that you said no? Well, I would dabble in it. But I, th I just felt like I had so much growth still to do on my own instrument. And while that has not stopped, I did reach a point where seeing and hearing how all the different parts of the orchestra work, rather than just to have my own voice on that one instrument, started to become more and more interesting to me. You know, I'm speaking of interesting, I'm sure that there are some in our audience who are tired of me doing this, but um, I often say I'm a student of leadership. And so, the analogy I often use when I'm teaching or writing about leadership is about an orchestra, even though I can't play an instrument. Help us understand. You are the leader of this orchestra. 
What have you learned about leadership in being that leader of that orchestra and others? Well, leadership ultimately is about managing people, as you know. And so my musical experience and skill obviously come into play. I don't get up and conduct this orchestra without everything I've done in music over the decades. But conducting is more than just conducting skill and musical skill. It's also about being in tune with people. And I'll never forget what one of my early conducting mentors said to me is, always remember you're conducting people and not notes on a page. And that's really what it is, because it's very easy to close your eyes and work with a soundtrack that you have in your head. But that's not the real experience. The real experience is collaborating with people. And, and that's where there's give and take. That's where you may give instructions, but you're also mm. adjusting and being aware of what's being offered to you. you the mentoring role, the uh, um, musician mentoring students, yeah. how powerful is that? I think it's amazing. I think it's a unique and different way to teach, different way to pass on what you've done. Because these students play at an exceptionally high level already. They may not need somebody next to them to say, look, if you use this fingering or you use this bowing, it's better. It may just be watching a professional's deportment at the job, how he or she goes about their business being like, oh, actually, I'm actually very close in terms of my own musical preparation, but to be a grown-up in the music world, sure. I need to take these steps just with the way I handle things. It may be that. It may be something that's actually musical, of course, and, and many other things. But I, I think it, there's clear evidence that it's already bearing fruit. Some of our former student fellows have already gone on to win major auditions with the Met, with the National Symphony, with the New Jersey Symphony, and other ensembles. So it's clearly doing something. Dear, last question for you. You have said that music is a powerful form of communication. Yeah. Does one have to be a musician to appreciate the communication that music is? Because no. I can't play, but it communicates to me. Go ahead. Absolutely not. It, it's like food or wine. You don't have to be a cook or a winemaker or a sommelier to to love what's being presented to you. And that's the ultimate goal is for music and your performance to say something. You don't need perfection, you just have to say something. Uh, before I let you out here, David Chan, uh, upcoming for the Montclair Orchestra is, come on, plug some stuff. Carnal of the Animals, children's program, November 3rd. Wow, this, by the way, this may be seen after, but then go on your website, right, which oh, is? Oh, we have a, Emerging Voices program in April. Lindemann Young Artists from the Met collaborating with the Montclair Orchestra. Go on the website, find out more. David, thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome, neighbor. I have to thank get by. You. Take care. Stay right Please there. Please do come. This has been One on One. I'm Steve Adubato. Thanks for watching. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Hackensack Meridian Health, the New Jersey Education Association, PSENG, the Russell Berry Foundation, the Northward Center, United Airlines, TD Bank, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, and by Adler Aphasia Center. Promotional support provided by NJ.com and by Tap Into TV. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.